Hey folks, Joseph A. Sabora here. Oh boy, I've seen plenty of very horrible cartoon adaptations of a popular TV series in my time, but this one takes the cake. What we have here was an 80s show about a girl who happens to be an owner of a record company who forms herself with a holographic image and her persona as a mysterious lead singer known as Jim and she forms a group with her sisters to become known as Jim and the Holograms and what they did here was they took the original source material from the series and replaced it with some generic boring and bland teen coming of age story filled with social media like Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and Instagram. And they signed a deal from a record company that's owned by an evil record executive. And there you go. And they're going around singing some very bland songs, none of which are memorable. And there you have it. Gem and Holograms as an in name only. Oh my god. Now for those true fans out there, including the ones who were born in the 80s and 90s, will know exactly what this series is all about. It's about one girl who owns and manages a record company known as Starlight Music who uses her late father's machine known as the Synergy which is an audio and visual synthesizer to create holograms that's coming from the earrings that she wears but apparently in order for her to become the lead singer known as Jim and she uses those holographic images to form the group with her sisters her younger sister named Kimber, who happens to be a keyboardist and a songwriter, along with two foster sisters, Aja and Shauna, who are both the guitarist and the drummer. And it was a very popular series. Hasbro wanted to come up with something that's sort of gearing towards the the female audience for kids but I know it does gear towards uh, the male audience as well considering that um, you know they were best known for bringing in the success of Transformers and G.I. Joe into the table so they thought this could work and it did it only lasted three seasons had lots of merchandising and and when you know it became a hit the show lasted from October 6 1985 all the way until May 2nd 1988 which happens to be the day of my birthday I was I just turned three years old at the time I watched the show when I was actually little I was a baby <laughs> um, they aired it on weekday and possibly Sunday mornings and that's how my station was at the time. Yeah, it, it was a series about how both Gem and the Holograms had started doing all their concert tours, selling millions of copies, and their rivals turned out to be a punk rock band known as the Misfits. And I know later they started getting um, another group called the Stingers. But that's in the third season. So they just go to all their adventures, you know, solving mysteries and crimes and stuff like that. And every once in a while, they always have a music video that's being played, you know, before they get into the next uh, story. So, with the help of Rio. So. It was a great show, um, well worth its time, 
but it definitely became a true winner. This movie, on the other hand, failed to do so. It just turned into basically another Hannah Montana clone. With just their names only, they, they changed the characters by making their foster sisters into Asians. And they're just living with their aunt because they actually came from Los Angeles at their old house that they live in since they lost their father. And they go around just wearing a lot of wigs and perform a lot of music of their own. And what do you know, they just record a video enough so they can upload it on YouTube so they can get millions of views until a record company picks them up. So there you go. This movie was made out of its five million budget. The box office only made up to 2.3 million dollars. It was a huge flop and Universal, the distributor of the film, had pulled out of theaters within two weeks and now it's going to go straight to video as of this week. Go figure. But <laughs> that's what you get uh, when you hire a director who happens to do the film Justin Bieber's uh, Never Say Never because as you know the director is indeed his manager and also the writer who has done some other stuff like some dance videos or something like that then you know you're in trouble and there you go that's the movie and oh god I, I can't believe I wasted two hours of my entire life watching this movie and it just seems to go on for so long in fact I actually call this movie simply Kesha and the Cash Cows because well this is gonna be a spoiler and it will be a spoiler throughout this entire review I'm sorry but you know this movie is bad when we found out who Pizzazz was. Anyway, it stars Audrey Pipples, Isabella Rice, Stephanie Scott, Haley Kayoko, Aurora Panu, Juliette Lewis, who's been in some other films like Cape Fear Remake, as well as California, and I know she was in that terrible film National Board Killers, but she went on to do films like Strange Days and and uh, The Other Sister and Whip It, even the What's Eating Girl But Grape. Yeah. Great actress, but but she has stuck some different roles. Ryan Guzman, who's been best known for all these step up films, also from the same director. Molly Ringwall. Best known as an 80s star from films such as the John Hughes films like The Breakfast Club, Sixteen Candles, Pretty in Pink, but she was also in the TV show The Facts of Life. And I know she went on to do that TV show on ABC Family called The Secret Life of American Teenager. Nathan Moore, Barnaby Carpenter, and Kesha. It's written by Ryan Landells and it's directed by John M. Chu. Yep. Once again, the director of of some sequels to the Step Up movies and Justin Bieber's Never Say Never. The movie begins when we meet a young girl named Jerrica Benton, who's now considered as a songwriter who wants up recording a video on how she began when she was young. She's living with her younger sister, Kimber, along with two adopted foster sisters, Aja and Shauna. They all live together with Aunt Bailey after their father died. Anyway, 
Jerrica had learned that their house is being auctioned, so some realtor might will be able to pick it up for the person who sold them to him. So she started to record a song about her emotions by dressing up, wearing some makeup, and wearing a wig, a blonde wig, with some uh, pink highlights. And she wants to recording a song uh, that she recorded it by using Kimber's video camera. So she forced uh, Kimber to delete the video, but unfortunately she couldn't. So she wants to taking it onto her laptop, you know, put the video on there, and then send it to YouTube, which would later become more successful and very popular in one day yeah it was getting millions of views and millions of likes with only five dislikes can you believe that totally unrealistic but in some ways yes every now and then I think it would be realistic to see one video being uploaded within a single day and gets millions of views but not something like this where Suddenly, there was a news report where they actually watched the video on one day. And it almost feels like, what, it was uploaded like eight hours ago? <sighs> see, see what I mean? Now I know this is impossible. Anyway, Jerrica and her sisters had traveled to LA because now Jerrica had earned a record deal with a record company called Starlight Productions where they met the producer Erica Raymond along with her son Rio. So suddenly they cross a small robot which is called 51N3RGY which was created by her late father which is pronounced Synergy. There you go which looks exactly like like the robot that you saw in Wall-E yep Eva anyway their father's name is Emmett and they lead them to a scavenger hunt just to find all the missing parts that he sent all around LA especially when they went to Santa Monica Pier after they left during the curfew they took a chip that was hidden inside um, the part of the pier, they connected it to the robot and suddenly it just leads us to a map that will point to the right direction. Yeah, basically a GPS map. Well, they got caught by the police and Rio and then suddenly they, they escape by jumping out of the pier <laughs> and swim for it until they started singing a song by using somewhat of a C note. Yeah, and I know even Rio started to sing too, which that's really impossible considering that he can't sing in in like he did in the cartoon. But of course when they did start singing some random bland song, yeah, you can even hear a, a homeless woman actually telling them, Will you just please quiet down? I'm getting some sleep. Just almost woke her up. I mean, <laughs> jeez. Anyway, the the next day, Aunt Bailey had told Jerrica on a website called FaceTime, only to find out that their house is being sold in an auction for five days, which makes it even worse because now, after they started um, touring at a local place, you know, just playing some other music, which unfortunately the the lights went out, and so they, everybody had to use their cell phone lights to, to light up the show, so they had to continue with the, the song, and by the way, the song was called Young Blood, and oh man, it almost feels like a ripoff of the song Fight Song by <laughs> Rachel Platten. Oh, brother. After a while, Jerrica had to sign a, a contract uh, for Erica 
on selling the entire house and which almost leads to bigger problems because now their sisters had had left her out and she wants them all alone so now she's just doing another song you know she wants up uh, wandering around looking for some more scavenger hunts but then her sisters finally came back just to continue their quest and to find out uh, what Erica was been up to so with the help of uh, Rio they wound up going inside the starlight office and they just found out inside the safe just when she was about to get her earrings just so they'd be able to connect uh, the, the earrings to a synergy robot she began to find out that um, that there was a will inside that Rio just found and that's what leads to the truth so anyway they almost got caught by Erica but they actually succeeded and when they reward f to finish the hunt the final hologram message video from Jerrica and Kimber's father had appeared and then they continued to start touring until they finally uh, until Rio and Jerrica finally kiss each other and the house is finally safe so now they have everything that they can own again and now and also Erica got fired for a job so now that's what leads to the mid credit scene where we find out that now Erica just found a punk rock band that turned out to be you guessed it the misfits and that's where we meet pizzazz that's played by Kesha yep that's just great that's just fucking great that they got Kesha who sang the song TikTok to play Pizzazz as the lead singer of the Misfits claiming that her music is better than the holograms fuck that movie fuck her and fuck that song that she sings and fuck her performance too as Pizzazz <sighs> yeah my music is better well it seems to me like they just did this scene just so it could set up for a sequel well it doesn't matter anyway because it's a flop well what can I say other than the fact that the movie fucking sucks I mean there's nothing to like about this movie all it is is just a bunch of girls who's supposed to play the characters from the TV series going on a scavenger hunt by finding all the pieces that's from a tiny little robot that their father had created and then all this time they're just singing some really bland songs none of which are very memorable at all they're just boring generic pop songs it's just like the ones that you hear on the radio there's nothing new about that this is like basically Hannah Montana bullshit and yes the cast was just as stupid as it could be I mean they can't act for shit uh, Audrey Peoples well given the work that she had I don't know I, I thought she was just bland nothing special I mean the fact that she's a brunette and she has like pink uh, highlights and all that and some makeup I, I don't buy this thing at all not at all as as Jim and Jerrica whatever and so is the rest of the characters they just didn't work for me Kimber is annoying um, Rio is just basically a jock nothing more <laughs> and I, I didn't buy the chemistry between the two in this film whatsoever uh, Molly Rainwell seems utterly wasted yeah, it seems to me like she was given a paycheck uh, Julia Lewis is even worse when she's playing that that shame shit tick that she played in every single movie from the 90s to today I was getting tired of that I mean she deserved better than that uh, the whole story is just ridiculous I didn't buy that at all it was just fucking boring 
which is funny because they had a message where they say that all the songs that they sing for who they are are better than the songs that they play on the radio. Wow, that's really funny. Unbelievable. Considering how bad the songs they play are, they're all the same. Some message. Well, there was also some stupid dialogue, including at the beginning of the movie, where when she started recording the video, she said something like, you know, since they have sisters all together in one roof, she says something like, uh, yeah, and if you think that way, then that's sexist, and you should be ashamed of yourself. Wow, that's a good advice, uh, Jerrica. I will learn from that from my next story. Ugh. In fact, there's even another scene where Kimber said something like, when they were about to uh, bring in some clothes that uh, Aunt Bailey had created, including all these uh, those wigs and and all these uh, trendy uh, clothes, yeah, basically 80s style clothes, she actually says, I don't want to look like a fashion refugee from 1985. Wow, and get this, because that's the year when the show premiered. It was also the year when Molly Wainwall was in a film called The Breakfast Club, which is released by Universal. Go figure. <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, and even worse, there was random YouTube videos that they play throughout the entire movie, scene after scene, where there are a bunch of guys and gals, you know, stumping up their feet, making a musical beat, you know, also clapping their hands on the mic. They they actually show a lot of people playing their instruments in a whole various different ways. They even got a guy playing all these balls on the water pails. Uh, they have one of them actually playing the drums. <laughs> and, wow. And get this. They even play one video that isn't really a YouTube video. Because I've seen this video before. It was a video of a small squirrel riding on a small water ski on a pool. My God, I was wondering how they, if, if all these YouTubers out there got paid for this. I bet they even paid for the video that they show. But either way, they must have some really good salary there. And they also put some also celebrity cameos, most of which were just videos from YouTube, where they show a video of Chris Pratt talking about how... Um, you know, he actually dated a gem doll. They even had um, Dwayne Johnson, aka The Rock, talking about uh, about a song which turned out to be uh, Taylor Swift's "Bad Blood." And then they show a clip from uh, the Tonight Show with Jimmy Fallon, where he actually has uh, Alicia Keys as guests. They're just talking about Jim. Which they're not really talking about how she's already become popular, which is ugh, unbelievable. See, they, they really failed at so many levels here. Oh, boy. <laughs> that just explains how cheap this movie was out of its $5 million budget. $5 million budget down the tubes. That money could have belonged to something else, you know that? That should have had. It should have belonged to charity. And they lost that money. I swear to God, what was Jason Blum thinking when he made this mess? And I just can't believe it too. They even got the cameos where we have uh, Samantha Newark as the hairstylist. Where they actually had a scene where Jerrica had to try out those wigs that actually resemble... Jim! Can you believe that? I hate that scene where the audience try to tease us into thinking that's exactly what she should have been dressed up in the first place. They did that with Robocop when they showed the original design of the Robocop look and the movie 
Annie from 2014 where they just showed the look of, get this, a little redhead girl who's dressed up as Annie, the way she's supposed to look like. God, what were they thinking? I hate it when people do that. And that's why this movie sucks. So if you're a huge fan of the show, stay away from this garbage and stick to the TV show. It's way better than this. And that's why I put this garbage on my top 25 of the worst movies of 2015. And it really shows. I really feel sorry for the fans. They really deserve better than this. They really should. There you have it. That's Gem and the Holograms, or Kesha and the Cash Cows. And I give that film zero stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabra, and I'll see you later. Much later. Bye!